Professor Allering, you will be presenting some exciting new figures on the effect of testosterone on prostate cancer recurrence in low-risk patients. How did you come about them and what do those figures suggest? Well, we came about it because we wanted to see if we could improve sexual function recovery in a group of men. And we would see men who would have a low free testosterone before and after surgery and their recovery from, of their sexual function was below what we were hoping it would be. So there was a lot of evidence to suggest that in low-risk men with a non-detectable PSA that we could treat them with testosterone, which is what we did. And we followed them over the years and now after a number of years, probably six or seven years in total, but an average of 3.1 years, we had enough men that we could do a very uh, in-depth, detailed description of how they were doing. We were really hoping to show that the recurrence rate wasn't higher, but much to our surprise, we showed that the recurrence rate was actually 53% reduced. What does that suggest and where do we go from here? What it suggests is that in, in our minds, we've known for a long time that, that men that are in better shape, that uh, have better muscle mass and better sexual function, seem to recover quicker and better and their recurrence rate is lower. In other words, obese men suffer a higher risk of a, a recurrence. They typically have higher grade disease. So we've, we have been working in a parallel project on diet and exercise, which has also reduced the PSA recurrence rate. So we thought, well, it does make sense from a metabolic syndrome point of view. So the, the idea is, is that maybe all men, even up to the median or the halfway point, might be considered for testosterone therapy to improve their, their muscle mass ostensibly make them more fit to reduce the biochemical recurrence rate, assuming that there are no other collateral uh, side effects that we would have to be worried about. So we're following that too. We haven't seen any side effects of, of any major note, actually. The only um, benefit really has been of the PSA and, the, and recovery of sexual function. And does your research call into question the general applicability of hormonal prostate treatment? It, it seems to suggest that for the longest time, for a very long time in prostate cancer, uh, having being more fit and having less metabolic syndrome, you know, lower blood sugars, better insulin control, can reduce the progression of the prostate cancer. But in some men, that may not play a role, or we're not certain. Or, but at some point, that does reverse, because when the disease does become metastatic, there's no question that deprivation of the testosterone um, by androgen deprivation therapy will make a significant improvement. But it, it appears to be a late event, and certainly with the long history of prostate cancer just in general, if we can prevent recurrence and prevent progression, uh, that could be all you need to do. You don't have to, quote, cure it. Why are you taking your research next? We will try and do a, a multi-centered uh, international randomized controlled trial. Uh, we're, there are two major groups that we're looking at right now that uh, are high volume robotic prostate cancer surgeons and we're going to see if we can get that funded and get that started within the next several months. Uh, you said um, international study, which other countries um, are you working with for the study? What, what countries? Well, you know, the, so in, uh, in Europe is the European Robotic Urological Group. I, I know those men very well. So it, it involves teams from Germany, France, uh, Switzerland, uh, the UK, all, all around uh, Europe. And then we also have the North American Robotic Urologic Group, uh, of which I'm a part. And so those are from different states, but there are about eight to ten groups from the United States and we're looking to have probably six to eight from Europe. Um, regarding just into a glimpse into the future, where will um, the research or where will therapy take us in the next ten years? Well, regarding it, prostate cancer. Sorry. That's right. If, I would like to see that testosterone levels are checked in all men uh, and particularly men in their 30s and 40s it appears to be a long exposure to low testosterone that is some men just think well I'm just getting older where there is a problem underneath whether in addition to getting older they've got this testosterone free testosterone in particular going down which if we were to test for that we could 
put men on testosterone replacement therapy before the diagnosis and maybe prevent it. There is a study uh, that Dr. Loeb pr published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology in 2017 that showed in Sweden that men that had been placed on testosterone replacement therapy, if they were diagnosed with prostate cancer, had a significantly lower risk cancer. And the two things that we want is try and cut down on the incidence of the prostate cancer and the curability uh, of the, with, with a single intervention. So the higher the risk disease, we do well with men not dying of prostate cancer, but a lot of men have to have secondary intervention besides just the surgery. And if we could impact that, that would be another amazing benefit in addition to just the reduction of you know, cancer that has to be dealt with at all. Professor Ellering, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.